Hello and welcome to Gradient's weekly roundup of key economic and business developments in Sri Lanka for the week ending 14th October 2022. I'm Nishani Figuera and here are the top stories for this week. Interim budgets taxes gazetted. Sri Lanka to remain classified as a middle-income country. World Bank says Sri Lankan economy will contract 9.2% this year. Over 80% of Aeroflot flights to Sri Lanka full, says Tourism Minister. We will also briefly look at other notable news and wrap up with a capital markets update. In our main story this week, on Tuesday, the supplementary gazette to the Inland Revenue Amendment Bill was issued. Given Sri Lanka's low tax collection post, the implementation of 2019 tax cuts, the interim budget measures are seen as being on the right path to raising tax revenue in the medium term to 15% of GDP from the current 8.5%. Effective 1st of October, tax-free allowance on personal income tax is reduced to 1.2 million per annum from 3 million, with slabs reduced at an incremental interest of 6% each. The standard corporate income tax rate is increased to 30%, and concessionary rates on select industries were removed. Capital gains tax rate was increased to 30% from 10%. Further, tax holidays on new investments were also removed. Withholding tax was applied on rent, over 100,000 rupees a month, and on interest, service fees, and dividends. Confusion reigned over Sri Lanka's decision to request the World Bank for reclassification. Earlier in the week, the cabinet approved requesting the multilateral agency to downgrade Sri Lanka to lower income from lower middle income. This would have enabled the country to receive cheaper loans, which currently Sri Lanka is not eligible for, given its higher income status. However, almost immediately, the president's media office issued a notice stating that Sri Lanka could continue to be classified as a middle income country while it pursues a reverse graduation policy for a limited period of time. Sri Lanka is to seek concessionary loans whilst being in the current income classification. The World Bank estimated that Sri Lanka's GDP will contract 9.2% in 2022 and a further 4.2% in 2023. The agency cited many households in the country facing severe hardships with a full-on economic crisis resulting in shortages of essential items. Further making a regional comparison, it noted that industrial production in real terms has risen elsewhere except in Sri Lanka. On Monday, Aeroflot resumed flights after a lapse of five months following a spat where Sri Lanka did not allow the departure of one of its flights. According to Harin Fernando, Minister of Tourism, the resuming flight was full capacity and stated it is learned that over 80% of seats are sold out until January 2023. According to the SLTDA, tourist arrivals during the first nine days of October were 11,093. Year to date, 537,325 arrivals have been recorded. India was the largest source market, followed by Russia and the UK. This week, Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe, Governor of the Central Bank, and Shahan Semasinghe, State Minister of Finance, held talks with Geetha Gopinath, first Deputy Managing Director of the IMF. Discussions were on the challenging economic situation in Sri Lanka and measures taken to tackle them. In other news this week, according to Vivet Fernando, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, a new Banking Act is expected to be passed in Parliament next year and is to also form part of an IMF-backed programme. A key reform was noted as being able to more easily resolve troubled banks. And now let's take a look at the weekly movement of the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange. At the Treasury bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on 91 and 182 day term maturities expanded. Of the 130 billion rupees worth of bids, 
60 billion rupees were accepted. And here's how the rupee performed against the dollar this week. In other market news, a 10 megawatt ground mounted power plant was opened at Solar Universe Vaunathu Solar PV Park in Batiklo. Slated to be the first agri voltaic power plant in Sri Lanka, it will add 20 gigawatt hours annually to the national grid. The project is funded by Windforce, Vidul Lanka, and High Energy and has a project cost of about 7 million US dollars. And that's a wrap for this week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for more updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.